Welcome to the second video I'm doing in a series where I go over all my programming projects uh, year by year and showcase them. Uh, this one is for 2020 um, and yeah, let's get started. This is definitely one of the biggest programming projects I've ever done. Uh, it's this 3D game where uh, I made I made the entire game with no game engine. Uh, or I guess you could say I, I made the game engine myself. Um, so it's uh, written in Java and it uses this library called Lightweight Java Game Library, uh, which basically gives you access to OpenGL uh, to kind of interact with, with the more low level uh, graphics. Um, so yeah, this was extremely difficult to make, especially considering I'd never uh, worked with 3D before. Uh, so I used this uh, YouTube tutorial series by a YouTuber called Thin Matrix, uh, which was absolutely crucial for me to even begin to understand any of this. Uh, but yeah, the game itself is this island explorer game where you fly around in this little plane and you look at these uh, procedurally uh, generated islands. Uh, there is no real objective in the game other than to just I look at the islands, uh, but yeah, um, the game was really, really difficult to make. Uh, I definitely faced some serious bugs, like some soul crushing bugs. Uh, it's the hardest thing I had ever done at the time, uh, but I'm really glad I did because it, it, it like taught me to persevere when it gets really hard. This is the first project where I ever used React. Uh, or Express, or Node, or MongoDB. Uh, it's this app where you uh, connect with a random developer. So basically you put in your username, uh, like your GitHub username or your Twitter username, uh, and then it will select a random developer who had done the same, uh, and then give you their username. And then your username will also be given to another developer later on. And then you kind of connect or like can check it check out each other's uh, profiles um yeah um and and it also had a feature for making you the featured developer of the day uh, so every day a random developer would be picked uh, and they would be like the featured uh, developer um so i remember when i posted this on twitter there was like 20 people who tried it uh which was really cool because that was the first time anyone uh, had tried something I'd made uh, who I didn't know. Uh, so that was a really cool feeling. This is the first blog post I ever wrote and it's about Jenkins, which is this CI CD tool. Uh, and specifically it's about running Jenkins using Docker and then having your tests run inside Jenkins uh, in their own Docker container. Uh, so kind of a Docker in Docker uh, situation um, and I got interested in Jenkins and Docker because I was working as a DevOps assistant and uh, all my co-workers were talking about this stuff and I didn't know much about it uh, I was doing something else um, so I decided to kind of create a project with this uh, testing uh, but I got really uh, frustrated when I couldn't find a good good enough resource uh, for specifically what I wanted to do this kind of uh, isolated Docker testing uh, and also running Jenkins uh, with Docker. Um, so I couldn't find any resource on that. So I decided to make uh, my own blog post uh, when I finally figured it out. Uh, and yeah, I made this uh, example node app, uh, which I uh, wrote like a very small test for and then a Docker file. And then I wrote this like blog post uh, describing how uh, to do this setup uh, that I wanted. This project is a text adventure maker. Uh, and yeah, I've always been into text adventures. Uh, and I've always thought that the most authentic place to run a text adventure is in your terminal. Uh, but it's really cumbersome to write uh, text adventures using shell scripting. Uh, so I wanted to come up with like a new script uh, that was really easy to write your text adventure in, uh, but that could then be converted to native shell scripts. Uh, so it can run natively in Windows and Mac and Linux. Um, 
and I made a UI for it and called it Otis. Uh, and uh, the front end is made with JavaScript and React, and the back end is made with Python and Flask. Uh, and the uh, database is uh, Redis, and all the apps run together with uh, Docker Compose. Um, this is one of the most pointless things I've ever made. Uh, it's this uh, project I made to learn TypeScript and it's basically a calculator, but it's just bad, but it's bad on purpose. So you'll like do some calculations and it will do like a really bad estimate. And it's, <laughs> it's supposed to be funny. Uh, it will like guess like one number wrong or it will just say some sentence uh, saying you should know this or like, it'll, it'll, uh, yeah, uh, basically just bad. Um, and uh, yeah, but, but it was a really great project to learn TypeScript with because uh, the list that I defined of answers that it could give uh, was really nice having like type safety and intelligence when making that. Um, but the calculator itself is completely useless. This isn't exactly a project, but more something I did. Uh, it's this course I took called Algorithmic Toolbox. Uh, it's a six week course where you get like these lectures and assignments and a computer will tell you if you pass or fail. And uh, I wrote all my assignments in Python. Uh, but yeah, I don't think I would recommend this course to be honest, uh, it was very uh, like math heavy and very difficult and just not very fun in general. Um, if you want to learn algorithms, I recommend just watching like YouTube videos uh, or, or read this book I really enjoy called Proking Algorithms. Uh, this is very visual and simple book. Uh, I think it's very entertaining as well. Um, yeah, I think, I think there's easier ways to learn algorithms to be honest, but, but yeah, the course wasn't for me, but I, I finished it and um, yeah, I got this sweet uh, certificate I can put on my LinkedIn. So uh, that's nice, I guess. This was version two of my personal website, which I used to get a job, uh, another job, uh, not the DevOps one, but a part-time job. And uh, it's not up anymore, but it was written in uh, TypeScript with React. Uh, and uh, yeah, it was just a very simple website. Uh, it had like a page about me and uh, contacting me and a link to my resume. Um, so yeah, just a simple website. Uh, I hosted it at home on my Raspberry Pi uh, and served the files using an Nginx Docker image. This was a huge project. Uh, I made it to learn Kubernetes, which is this DevOps technology. Uh, was this app that would let you save secrets securely uh, by encrypting them using a password that you supply. Uh, and then you can retrieve them later uh, or have someone else retrieve them. Um, and the front end was written in JavaScript with React and the back end was written in Python with Flask. Uh, and I used Nginx to expose the API and serve the front end. Uh, and I was getting really into monitoring at the time. So I was using Prometheus to monitor basically everything. Uh, it would monitor the backend. It would monitor uh, the nodes of the cluster, which was just my laptop. Uh, it would monitor Kubernetes components. Uh, it would even monitor the Prometheus instance itself, like it would monitor itself. Uh, and I used Grafana to display the dashboards with the monitoring data. Um, and uh, the database was Redis, uh, and there was one main and two replicas. Um, and there was like, with this system, uh, I really wanted it to be highly available. So there was multiple replicas of uh, everything, uh, but specifically with the database, it was really complicated because they had like different roles, like main and replica. Uh, and I had to write like shell scripts for them to, uh, start up properly and figure out who's who. And, um, yeah. Um, so this was like a really, really big project. Uh, and that was kind of the point of making it because 
at the time I really had an urge to work on something uh, very big and complicated, but I didn't have such a project through my work or anything. Uh, so I just decided to take one of my projects and just make it uh, unnecessarily big and complicated uh, on purpose. Uh, and it was really, really difficult. Um, I'm not even really sure how I made myself do it. Uh, it's the same with the Island Explorer game. Uh, when I look back on it, it's just kind of magic. Uh, maybe it's because I haven't worked on them in a while. Uh, but they really taught me something about doing hard things, which is that even though something is really, really difficult, uh, it's almost never impossible. Uh, so uh, you might as well try uh, and you get most out of doing the hard things. So I made this project because I had gotten a new job, uh, actually with the help of the website I made two projects ago. Uh, and also the last project, because they really liked that I knew uh, Kubernetes. Um, but this company uh, only coded in C Sharp, um, which I didn't know at the time. Uh, so I made this very simple app uh, to help me learn that. So basically, it you give it like a map name and it will procedurally generate a sequence containing uh, the values, which are either cat or dog. And then you just have to remember the sequence and you can uh, test to see how much of it you remember and you get like points. And yes, yeah, it's a very minimalistic app, uh, but it helped me learn uh, more of the like .NET uh, ecosystem. I got the idea for this project because I was thinking about what would happen if you bought like a ton of lottery tickets, uh, would you make a profit? Uh, probably not, but it would be a pretty fun game to uh, let you buy as many lottery tickets as you want, as fast as you want, and then uh, you can see if you made money or not. Um, so yeah, that was kind of the premise of this app. I called it Limitless Lottery. Uh, and the front end was written in JavaScript with React, and the back end was written in Go, which was the first time I'd ever written anything in Go. Uh, today it's a language that I really enjoy using, but this was the first time I'd used it. Uh, and uh, another big thing I wanted to teach myself with this project was authentication. Uh, so prior to this, I'd done nothing with authentication at all. I haven't used it in any way. Uh, so I thought a good way of to teach myself the concepts would be to implement it from the ground up. Um, so this app would allow you to sign in and uh, sign up and uh, it would store your username and password in the database. Of course, it would hash the password with all the uh, secure practices uh, and then the client will send like session tokens to the server and which will validate them and uh, yeah um, the database was MongoDB and the whole thing ran together with Docker Compose. Uh -huh.